What's up guys, Rogue9 here, and the Rainbow Six Siege community has been shaken to its core this week with the decision of Bikini Body to quit the game, at least for the time being. Uh, I remember I did a live stream on the day that Bikini Body uh, released his announcement video, and one of the main questions, no, the main question in my chat was people asking me my opinion on this this heavy decision. I mean, it's it's not a, not a small deal for someone who focuses on Rainbow Six Siege content to take a step away from the game. So in today's video I want to sort of look at that topic again but I want to do one better. With me here today to discuss his decision is the man, the myth, the legend himself, Bikini Body. How's it going Bikini? It's going good. Excellent. So far. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thanks for taking the time to discuss this. I think there's been a lot of questions from the community about this. And maybe we can start off discussing the topic topic uh, by you giving us a bit more of an insight into what led you to making this decision. Because I, I can't believe that this was just something that happened because of one game or one, one cheating incident. This must have been something that has been building up over time, maybe even over the last couple of seasons. So maybe you want to take us back through the your recent uh, experience of Rainbow Six and walk us through what led to this decision to step away from the game. Yeah, so so in, in terms of gameplay, I, I, I still love the gameplay of Siege and I didn't really have too much problems with Chimera. That was was mostly like really high competitive play that really had a problem with Lion and Finca. So this is no, my decision is not because I dislike the game. I love the game um, and its gameplay. Uh, what made me do the decision is uh, uh, just frustration that has been building up for a long time with uh, how long it sometimes takes to fix things that are completely game-breaking. And I mean, if we compare to other AAA games, they can get hot-fixed in matters of hours or maybe days, but not sometimes with Siege. We can we have to wait for months. Uh, name like dock glitch uh castle glitch the jagger shield glitch uh recently we had the hipfire glitch that was hot fixed pretty fast on pc so it's definitely gotten better in terms of glitches uh, fixing glitches lately but now that we've had this epidemic of hackers lately and zero communication about it it has pissed me off i think See, the Siege developers really need to step up their communication with the community because sometimes just hearing them acknowledging that it's a problem would actually go a long way. Because we know, we, we take it technically, we, we know they know, but it feels bad when they don't tell us that they know. It's, it's weird to explain, but you feel yeah. left out. I think your video highlighted this perfectly, like you did just a very short search on Twitter and there's been so many pro players or, or uh, content creators for Rainbow Six Siege that have been mentioning cheating as a problem right now. Yeah, and, and like zero responses from the community uh, or, or from Siege. Yep. Zero response from Siege. And it's so weird because I've gotten res we've gotten responses on anything other we post. But as soon as we even mention hackers or hacking, they are completely silent. And it does piss everyone off. Just yeah. tell us that they are working on it and it will actually go a long way. Yeah, it's a challenging topic, right? There's there's only so much they're willing to say because I spoke to, I think it was uh, one of the community managers once about cheating and he sort of flat out told me this is not something we discuss ever because the less information there is out there about what they're doing, um, yeah. the harder it is to actually create cheats and maintain them and for cheaters to stay under the radar. So I do yeah. empathize with them a little bit, but I think you make a good point. Some acknowledgement of we know this is a problem and don't worry things are being done something like that even if it's very vague would help yeah. put a lot of minds at ease yeah just helping the community stay positive they don't really need to give out dates uh although lately they've been really bad with dates uh parabellum release being one of them um but yeah, just some sort of communication, acknowledging that there's a problem, uh, letting us know that they are working on it uh, and, not, and that we're not ignored. 
it would go a long way. Yeah. So in terms of you stepping back from the game right now, is that mainly because of your lowered enjoyment, because of the problems with uh, glitches and cheaters at the moment? Or is that also you taking sort of a stand for the community and sending a message? It's both. One, all of this uh, stuff is is making me enjoy the game less. And I still love Siege and I don't want to start hating Siege. So that's one reason why I, I don't want to play it, because I don't want to start disliking the game a lot. Um, so it's a way of avoiding uh, me starting to hate Siege. Yeah. But also me being, I, I really don't want to, but a, a prominent f figure in the community, it does send a message that, and even if it doesn't make it get fixed faster, because it probably, let's be honest, me quitting won't get it, make them fix it faster. However, it may make it so that in the future, they're actually, they may prepare better so that this never happens again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because fair point. I've probably influenced a lot of other people's to pay, take a break and that's something that they probably don't want so even if it doesn't make it get fixed faster it's definitely i'm 100 sure that it's going to influence so, them so that they they're going to build up so so that and, and fortify so that this is not something that's going to happen again okay yeah in the future yeah, that's fair enough. I think you've mentioned cheating sort of as the main issue right now. So can you maybe give us some of your thoughts on why cheating is so bad in Siege right now? And also, why specifically Siege? Uh, one of the examples that comes to my mind is another uh, online online shooter, and that's Fortnite. It's free to play, but we hardly ever hear about cheating issues there. So do you have any ideas as to why cheating is such a problem in Siege right now? Um, so there are a lot of things that separates Fortnite and Siege. Fortnite has two anti-cheats. They have Easy Cheat and Battle Eye. And Siege has Battle Eye. I wouldn't really count Fair Fight in because it's 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 not really too if it's not really that effective. It only stops a few low level players from performing too well or whatever it was. I don't I don't really understand it. Yeah. But Another thing that separates Fortnite from Siege is that Fortnite is just play and have fun. Siege has more... We have competitive mode. And there's an incentive to really win. Uh, Fortnite doesn't really have that. Um, you see some, some streamers get sniped in Fortnite by hackers, but that's about it. There's no one who casually hacks in, in Fortnite because there's no incentive to do so. But in Siege, there is because you can gain rank or you can boost someone um, and get money from it. Um, yeah, I think that's a really important point. I've I've seen some boosting services offered for hundreds of dollars, like it, depending on how many ranks you want to go up, even up to a thousand dollars and more per person being boosted. That is... That is a serious sideline industry that has sprung up right now. And the thing is that, okay, if someone is cheating, if someone's running cheats on their account, they might get banned, but the people they're boosting get to keep all the benefits they've they've had up until then. So yeah. there's there really is, I think, obviously there's the cheaters who will cheat just to be better in the game themselves, but then they run the risk of getting their account banned. But the problem with yeah. Siege probably, like you've mentioned, is the boosting because the, the cheaters themselves, they don't care if a stolen account that they've bought for 50 cents gets banned. What they care about is getting the people that they're that are paying them to bring them up in rank that they get there and stay there. And I think you're right in pointing that out as a main problem. The sad part is that there are some, I mean, I, I, I don't know exactly code-wise, but there are some ha probably harder fixer, fixes and some easier fixes, I feel like. The harder fixes, probably code-wise, is the hardware bans I've seen to people talk about. That would probably go a long way because then they would actually need to exchange hardware to, to keep hacking. But I feel like if they implemented it uh, so that to play ranked, you actually need to have two-factor authentication activated on your account. I think that's a fair deal. What do you think about that? Like, if someone is going to be able to play ranked, they need to activate two-factor authentication on their account. 
Yeah, I think that's a, a perfect, perfectly valid point. I think they should, at the very least, there needs to be a, an awareness campaign, even just for for people to protect their accounts. Because one of the problems is that yeah. these these cracked accounts, these stolen accounts, are so cheap and available right now. If that supply dries up, that will make the boosting professionals that would make their job a lot harder. So just even bringing it into players' awareness, protect your accounts by activating two-factor authentication or even going as far as to make it mandatory, either if you want to play ranked, make yeah. it mandatory, or make it mandatory for all players. If you want to use Uplay, protect yourself by using two-factor authentication. It's in everyone's interest, really. Yeah, absolutely. And I definitely think they could also increase uh, the the rank, the level to play ranked. Um, and that shouldn't ha either be too hard from a game development standpoint. That's literally changing a value. Uh, from well, 20, which is ridiculously low. It made sense back in the day where, where people played and, and was able to hit, hit ranked. But nowadays, 20 is way too low. I think they could definitely go and increase it to 40 or 50. Yeah, um, I think that's fair enough. And for someone who's just legitimately playing, being forced to have maybe a little bit more practice before going into ranked, that's yeah. not a bad thing either. Yeah, I, I definitely, it, it wouldn't be a problem if they raise the, the required level to play ranked. I, I think most of the community would actually be in favor of that. And I don't think someone that's super low level will have that much of a problem. Uh, and it will also limit Smurfs in a sense as well, which yep. is also a good thing. Yeah, but, because that yeah. is kind of like, it is almost like a, a boosting, but maybe not as a professional service. You get the players who will create an account, uh, m lose all their games they can, lose also as many games as they can to get all the way down to copper. Then they join up with their friends to get better matchmaking, easier matchmaking. That, yeah. I think, is is a separate problem that can also make the experience uh, less enjoyable. So... Obviously, you've sent a strong message by releasing the video, the announcement video you did, by talking about it now, uh, and also by stepping away from Siege for a bit. So tell us a little bit about maybe if you've had any response from the devs. What have, what have their reactions been to you taking this, this kind of a step? So I, I, I can assume that there's two kinds. Um, there's the negative response, which is has only been silence if someone has a negative attitude towards what I've done. Uh, because no one has vocally been angry about my decision. So if anyone is angry, they're just being silent and not talking about it. But I have had some positive, um, well, kind of positive response from a few devs about it where they understand it. Uh, mm -hmm. Because the thing is, when, when the community hurts, when the community is frustrated, they're also frustrated. It's it's their game. It's it's their child that they're working day in and out on, and they don't like this either. There and this is real. I mean, when there are even without me leaving, they're still getting a lot of negative feedback, and they don't want that. Um, I think a lot of people have a very negative attitude towards the devs, where it's like, oh, they just want to make money. Well, the thing is, what's in their best interest right now is fixing the game. It was the same thing with Operation Health. People said that they wanted to draw out all the money from the game. If they really wanted to draw out all the money from the game, they wouldn't have done Operation Health. They would have just kept milking it until it was dead, but they didn't. So. Well, the fact that they did Operation Health really shows that the developers actually care about the game. Yeah, that's a fair point. And I think in terms of this latest season, in terms of the new map and the new operators, they've done an, an exceptional job. It's probably one of the most balanced uh, releases that we've seen in recent times yes. in, in terms of how, how well the operators work, not being too strong, not being too weak. So yeah. they've, they've, they are doing a great job at... Uh, improving and and developing the game itself and this whole cheating problem is kind of an external thing that a lot of the the content developers will have no connection to anyway yeah at the, at the moment the game is actually fantastic the gameplay has is better than it's ever been both maestro and alibi are exceptional additions to the game alibi is a ton of fun she's maybe not the most va uh, um, uh, valid from a competitive standpoint, but she's fun. And I'm happy that they're focusing on adding more operators that are fun and not just competitive. Um, the same with Maestro. Uh, 
although he's a bit more competitive, he's still just fun. So Parabellum is easily one of the best seasons we've had. It's and it's sad to to see these hackers ruin it. Yeah, and I think it's also worth mentioning that part of the root of this problem are the people who who put so much value on getting a fake rank that they will actually pay people to cheat to boost them. Because, I mean, there has to be a market for this somewhere, and I think boosting is a huge part of the problem. And part of that problem, possibly the largest part, are the people who are actually willing to pay hundreds of dollars or more to get a what is essentially a fake rank. That's not something they've achieved. It's not something re that resembles their skill. It's just completely fake and meaningless. But yeah, that's currently ridiculous. part of, of the psyche of a lot of the players in Rainbow Six. It's ridiculous. Uh, and man, <laughs> I, I, don't, I honestly don't know what's worse. People paying to get, get a fake rank or, or a rank that they, they, they don't actually deserve. Uh, like, what's, there's, there's no point except getting a diamond charm yeah but it doesn't matter if you have diamond rank and you can't prove that you deserve it um and but man it, and it, it pisses me off so much because they're they're ruining such a great game yeah i think that that is one of the topics that i mentioned in my video where i where i explained how the ranking system works like in several uh, public blog posts, Ubisoft have mentioned that the ranking system isn't supposed to be a reward system. It's supposed to be a matchmaking system that puts you against other players that have sort of the same chance of winning that gives you fair and enjoyable matches. It's not supposed to be a reward, but still a lot of players perceive it as such and then will use any measures possible to try to achieve a rank that maybe they, they wouldn't be able by playing by simply by playing. I think the optimal thing would definitely have been to work out a, that is actually somehow values individual skill as well. Yeah. Or, or you, you know, like uh, we've seen in other multiplayer games where they've worked out ranked systems, whereas if you perform bad, even, even if you might win, you might not get any points. Whereas if you win and you're the one who's really carrying you get a lot of points and i know that there's an argument here that like kills kill death ratio is not everything Al although it definitely has some value in siege um and i i, I think they could definitely in implement that some way I I even if you just had some sort of individual modifier to the elo that you're gaining it would, it would go such a long way because even for boosters, it would take them so much more time boosting someone if the boosted one can't prove that he's performing and barely gain any elo. I think that would be a great fix so that if someone is literally not contributing to the team at all, I don't think that they deserve anything. Like Regardless if they're doing it through callouts, they don't deserve uh, to get that much elo. Yeah. Uh, I think some individual modifier should be added. I fully agree with you on that point. I think if there was, if they could figure out a way to distinguish the actual contribution of players, that yeah. would be perfect. But I think one of the issues you've mentioned is that it's hard to sort of quantify call out. So what if someone's playing Echo and spends the entire round getting his roamers killed by calling out uh, all of the positions like without pinging if someone pings obviously the system detects that and can uh, uh, apply some kind of value to that but when someone's yeah. just making verbal call outs which can be really valuable how do you measure that and i think especially if you're looking at kills as a measure yeah. there is uh, one additional problem like if people know that they're going to be rewarded for kills there's going to be a whole lot of people yeah. more that will try to kill steal. Even when you're playing just with, with, with people in a group, there's, if, there's, if I'm going to get some more points by getting that kill, even though it's already been downed or even though someone else is already winning that fight, uh, there is an incentive to do that, especially then when you're solo queuing. Uh, people will just be stealing each other's kills left, right and center to the point where they might even compromise 
on on holding a, a, a different angle, they might even then end up losing the round because they're so focused on trying to get that that one extra kill or two. I think there I could think, be issues. I, I, I think it could be fixed, whereas if someone is injured by another player, the ELO would not be affected if... But although they would have to be very clear on that. Um, but, but I think there are ways to really show individual skill. I mean, we've seen previously, like when you're on cameras and you, and you tag people, I think there are some ways that the system could recognize that, oh, that player was watching that player on the camera. And okay. might have might have given that person a call out as he was killed just seconds after. Sure, I mean maybe the kill stealing is one issue, but then I'm even thinking that it might uh, influence people's choice of uh, play style. Like if roaming on defense is going to get you the kills, it's going to get you that additional reward. You'll have more people that will want to roam, and you'll have almost nobody willing to actually sit in objective and anchor. So I think strategically there would be an impact of trying to to uh, reward yeah. kills more than not. Depends on how you would see how we would reward, because we could make it so that Intel rewards you with a lot of team play, or so to say, because that's what they want to do. They want your rank to show your team play. So yeah. while kills would definitely contribute a little bit, they could make it so that Intel would actually reward a lot. And obviously, at the end of the day, if you lose the game you will still not gain anything. So I don't think it would result in a lot of people just sitting on the cameras and stuff. Although it would encourage droning and using the cameras, I don't think it would result in five people sitting on the cameras as, as then they won't gain anything because their intel won't mean anything. I think there are some ways that they could work. It's pro probably really complicated, but if they could, it would be so fantastic, especially against boosting services as if we have one player that is literally not, not contributing at all and there's just a hacker running around and doing all the work that those other players in the squad should not be rewarded yeah i think even coming from a different angle if you're uh, squatted up if you're in a you play group with a, a cheater someone who is then later exposed as a cheater if they could uh, go back and then either remove all of the rewards that were gained by oh, the yeah. people during those sessions or even apply some kind of punishment i would definitely be for that so i, I think there are, there are definitely ways to work this out i think so i, I would agree with you that it's it would be a complex topic. It would be. It would need some very, very careful calibration. If they can do it, I'm all for it. I would say it, it would probably affect me because <laughs> I'm more of a, a support player. I'm. I'm not one who is usually up front and center. Um, but if 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 it goes like that, that's fair enough. But yeah, that was I think quite interesting. Something maybe more about you personally with this decision you've taken as a Rainbow Six Siege focused YouTube channel and streamer. Are you worried yeah. at all that? For you to step away from the game like this is is that going to affect you at all? This is your profession. This is your career. Are you? Do you have any concerns in that kind of way? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's like when if I upload something that's not siege, it definitely gets less views. And for me, the question now is how long can I do that without the views starting to really plummet? Uh, how how long can I do it before my suggestion rate goes? to nothing. Mm. I mean, I have pretty decent suggestion rate right now. I, I might screw up my channel now for forever. I might not be ever be able to, to pick this leverage up again. Um, so it's definitely scary. Um, but it's, it's, it's a sacrifice that I'm willing to do. Because I, I, I do love Siege. And I think that in the end, this is going to be the better choice. Because if I don't... Like, the impact that it, that my decision has is going to be for the better in the long run. Uh, and hopefully I won't have to be away for too long. And what will you be doing in the meantime? Do you have any ideas already? I saw you were streaming some For Honor today. Uh, what else can people look forward to sort of in the, the near future from you? So... <laughs> I kind of choose the wrong time period to to take a break from Siege because there aren't a lot of new games. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I've, uh, I've been playing For Honor now. Uh, and I also have a vlog from E3 coming up. 
But in terms of other games, I don't know. In a, in a week, we're getting the Crash Bandicoot trilogy on PC. So I might play that. And maybe to round everything off, how long do you think you'll be away for? I mean, obviously, we don't know exactly what's happening now, but um, do you have any kind of anticipation of how long you can keep this going? Uh, I'm hoping for less than a month. Mm -hmm. uh, it may get fixed in two weeks. I mean, the thing is, the hacker problem has been going on for a long time now, and it is definitely harder to fix than uh, than than something really in the game. This is something that is an issue outside the game so it may take a bit longer to fix it's not something that they could fix overnight if they they worked overtime um so but but they have probably already been working on it for some time um so i'm expecting a fix soon uh hopefully it's gonna be enough if it's not gonna be enough i'm still gonna be on my break but Hopefully in less than a month. Yeah, I think you bring up a good point there in terms of the, the devs not even, not being able to sort of work any harder or faster on this, uh, mainly even because the sort of the, the anti-cheat uh, measures that we see in any game are usually provided by specialized external companies. So tackling this is maybe not even something that developers from Ubisoft would be doing directly, but they have to co coordinate with uh, the developers at BattleEye in terms of dealing with this uh, this sort of rising threat almost. It's just gaining more and more momentum. And uh, yeah, I think I fully agree with you that that's not something they can influence directly as much. So yeah, I think that's been quite interesting. I hope it doesn't go on for too long, not just obviously for the wider community, but also for you. Um, I think your videos will be missed by many, or at least your Siege content. And I do hope that everyone uh, does sort of give your other videos a, a chance uh, because, I mean, I've seen some of your non-Siege videos and I almost <laughs> like them better. I mean, the last, I, I do too. I the do last too. Far Cry video just made me laugh all the way through. It was absolutely hilarious. We should do more though. I, I really got to make a video on the shovel launcher. Yeah, we can do that. Let me know when you're free. Excellent. Yeah. Was there anything you wanted to say right at the end to round it all off or have we pretty know. much, <laughs> have we pretty, I think we've pretty much covered it. Yeah. Excellent. So yeah, thank you again for joining me for this uh, video. Thank you again for giving people a bit more insight into what was sort of going through your mind to make this decision. I think you've made perfectly valid points today, uh, some great ideas on how it could be improved and hopefully really are both fingers crossed that this is already something they're working hard on and that we will see an improvement oh, in Rainbow Six soon. It is. They, they are definitely working on it already, I'm, I'm sure. Hopefully they do it fast. And that it's made correct. I, I hope they they wouldn't rush it, uh, yeah. regardless of my decision. Um, hopefully, it's it's done in a way so that this is never going to be this big of an issue again. Like I, I'm a hacker, like once every hundred game, like sure. But nowadays, when it's like one in three, it's it's not really playable. And I think something that has also changed and that is a more recent development is how blatant it is. Like, you, yeah. you maybe used to have a game where someone would wallbang you and it looked a bit fishy, it looked a bit dodgy, but now you'll just have people straight up shooting through the walls, teleporting to the, to the attacker spawn and dropping a C4 at the beginning, all these kinds of really, really obvious things that, that should get people banned within 24 hours and yet people are still doing it, which is, yeah. it's just, it is so frustrating. But yes, thank you again for taking the time to join me today and thank you to everyone at home for watching. As always, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next episode.